So just yesterday, I saw an interview involving two of the greats when it comes to environmental advocacy and work from very different walks of life. So you have Greta Thunberg, who's been doing amazing work over the past year, and Sir David Attenborough, who's you know obviously a great documentarian focusing on the natural world. It's been around forever, is considered a national treasure of Britain. Well, they spoke, and you don't often get to titanic figures inside of a topic like this. Um, and I want to show you some of it because I found it to be inspiring, but also there's an interesting cautionary tale here. So here's the first section. Sir David Attenborough has asked what he thinks that Greta has been able to achieve so far. You see, you achieve things that, that many of us who've been working on it for 20 odd years have failed to achieve. Uh, that is, you have aroused the world. I'm very grateful to you. We all are, really. I think everyone is grateful for you for, for taking on the climate crisis and on, on the environmental crisis. I hope you understand how much difference you have made and that we are all very thankful for that. So, so thank you and thank you for, for dedicating your life to this and uh, it's, very, it's very inspiring. So let me just, there's a brief aside, it's gonna sound stupid, but you know one of the things I love about that? Is have you ever seen that? Like, you think about like movie reviewers, different movie reviewers. There might be some movie reviewers that like everything, they give everything a good review, but then there's some that are very critical. And so, when they like a movie, it sort of means something. Well, like, Greta doesn't feel any sort of need to be polite to anyone just because they're a big figure, a national treasure, they've been knighted or whatever. Like, she will go up to national leaders and tell them, like, no, you're lying to everyone. You say you care about climate change, you don't care about climate change, you're not gonna do anything. Like, she doesn't have that weird filter that pretends that people are all like doing their best. And so, when she says that, when she says that, like growing up in the extended interview, and you should watch the whole thing, she talks about growing up and watching his documentaries and being exposed to areas of the earth and of the natural world, the natural order that she hadn't seen. And that was inspiring to her to get invested in this at a very early age. And she respects the work that he has done. I mean, he hasn't been focused exclusively on climate change or anything like that, but he's done a lot of work and advocacy in this area. So, like her giving the stamp of approval on him is very significant, and you love to see it. So, moving forward, David Attenborough, who's been around for a long time, he's been trying to get people interested in this for a very long time, longer than Greta's been alive, obviously. He was asked what he's concerned about for Greta as she continues her work. Uh, it's very difficult to know when you, when you get to that sort of degree of pressure, how long can you sustain it? How long can you go on saying the same thing um, with the same impact? And of course you can't. Uh, I mean, a first impact is a first impact, and the impact of what Greta's been saying uh, is is uh, so powerful. You can't expect that to happen to, to continue for a month or six months or or a year unless you introduce some new element in the thing. And that's one of the problems that those of us who are concerned with 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 uh, awakening the world have to deal with. I don't I don't know why people are listening to me. Um, I don't know how long it will last. I just know that right now people are listening to me, and I need to take to use that opportunity and to try to get out as much as I can during that time. Uh, but of course, it, it is a problem with, with, I mean, repeating things over and over again since, but I mean, that's what you need to do because they're obviously not listening and, and you need to repeat it until people get it, until it is being understood. That is, that is awesome, I, I love the advice that he provided for her and she does, she seems to have, not uncharacteristically, a very mature, sober understanding of what's likely to happen. Like, she is not someone who, in the space of a year, has been elevated from a girl who had just been protesting outside of a parliament, lifted up to one of the biggest national figures, you know, time, person of the year, and thinks, I'm, I'm it, I got it, I'm good with this for the rest of my life. Like, she understands the scale of the problem. She understands also human nature that the same group that can lift you up, man, if she says something wrong, a lot of people are gonna throw her in the fireplace. So she does seem to understand that. She understands the scale of the problem that she's facing and also the nature of the problem that she's facing. So in the same way, David Attenborough was saying like, he's been trying to get people interested in this for literally decades and it's very difficult. Like people, they get bored of a message unless it changes. And if there's not progress, then they start to get fatalistic about what can actually be done. And I will close by saying, 
Yes, I'm experiencing this too. I mean, the nature of this show when it was set up, the damage report was going to be, we are not going to shy away from the bad things that are being done. And we are going to be a daily reminder. We are not going to allow these things to be normalized under Donald Trump, but also outside of Donald Trump and outside of the United States. And so when it comes to climate change, for instance, it does often feel like, are people really listening? Do they care? Are they getting bored? Is it being normalized? Like, take a look at, like, imagine if um, I'd had more space on the rundown and I'd done the sort of stories that I normally do. So, I would have talked about this. Thousands of Australian residents had to take refuge on a beach as wildfires raged. That picture there, that is not a shot from Lord of the Rings. Take a look at this video footage uh, that I saw the sunrise movement spreading. It was 12:20 in the afternoon when that footage was released. Difficult to see anything. It looks like Mad Max in the middle of one of those primal elemental storms. And people had to flee to the beach to potentially run into the ocean. A wall of water was set up because fire, uh, fires were closing in on these coastal communities. Australia is blanketed by literally dozens of wildfires right now. That has not gotten better, okay? We keep checking in. It's a horrible situation, but it's not the only one. This was from a day ago, a call to arms as planet's essential groundwater is being rapidly depleted. That is a massive issue in terms of in the north, you know, you have buildings collapsing because the permafrost is slowly warming up. But in areas where you need like water, groundwater for agriculture, areas are being killed effectively by climate change. That's pretty significant. Is there gonna be a lot of focus on it? Probably not. And then related issues, not exactly the same, but this report, the Amazon lost the equivalent of 8.4 million soccer fields this decade due to deforestation. That is continuing and Brazil, the new leadership, Bolsonaro is doing everything he can to accelerate that. That is a challenge that he thinks they can beat in the next decade. And for the American audience, that's the equivalent of 10.3 million American football fields. It's also the same as if they had taken out Connecticut, Hawaii, Massachusetts and New Jersey in Amazon jungle over just the past decade, by the way, when most of the world has moved on from that issue. So it is huge and it is a grind, please stick with it though. You know, I don't care where you get your motivation from. If it's from the old guard from Sir David Attenborough, if it's from the new heroes like Greta, either way, just keep it the fight. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.